Okay, so this video is called, what is our healthiest moment? And so when do we feel best? All right, and I'm gonna say it's walking in the sun on the beach with somebody that we love. All right, and I'll show you a picture here. So here's a picture of a family walking on the beach in the sun. And why is this so good? Why is this such a great thing? <clears throat> well, first of all, you're exercising and we all know that. It's good for your muscles, it's good for your spine because the disc doesn't have any blood vessels. It, works the glucose into the disc, um, the disc extrudes its waste products, good for the brain, brain-derived neurotropic growth factor is released during exercise. You get increased angiogenesis, growth of new blood vessels on the surface of the brain to provide oxygen, synaptogenesis, forming new synapses, new neurons, neurogenesis. You get mitochondrial storage. Uh, you get glycogen storage in the astrocytes. You get mitochondrial biogenesis, production of new mitochondria. So the exercise has lots of good things. It moves your lymphatics. You get 10 to 30-fold increased lymphatic flow, makes your immune system work better to prevent infection and cancer. You get better venous return from your legs, of course. All right, so anyways, <clears throat> the you know walking with loved ones, you have social support system there. It's pleasant to be in love. It's just great. Okay, um, your outdoors, the air is fresher outdoors, time with nature, that's all good. Okay, so what else? The sunlight, of course, it releases. You got nitric oxide precursors in your subcutaneous tissues. And when you feel that sun, it feels good immediately. It releases those nitric oxide precursors causing vasodilation. Um, that feels good. You get increased vitamin D. Increased vitamin D does a lot of things. Besides better bones, better immune system, uh, less autoimmune disease, reverses, uh, renews reduce glutathione, the major antioxidant, so you get less oxidative stress because your glutathione system is functioning better. Uh, Stephanie Seneff, she's real famous, MIT PhD, for studying the glycocalyx and the effect of glyphosate on it. And she believes that the sunshine is increasing availability of sulfates for use by the glycocalyx to maintain its negative charge, its zeta potential. Okay, then the next thing is infrared light. I realize you haven't heard all this stuff. You don't know all this stuff. That's okay. Yeah, I'm just introducing it in this video. I'll, I've already made videos about a lot of this stuff, but I'm going to make more videos on some of the stuff real soon. But I want to just put this concept into one quick video. Okay, easy water means exclusion zone water. Water has four phases. A lot of people aren't aware of that. There's liquid water. There's water vapor. There's ice. That's three phases. But the fourth phase is like jello, almost a partially semi-crystalline structure of water. And that's the water in our body. I was an imaging guided surgeon in my previous life, and I can tell you, doing a lot of uh, procedures, I never once saw a patient leaking water. The point being is, everybody knows our bodies are largely composed of water. Well, why doesn't it leak all over the place? And the reason is, it's mostly in a gel, like a jello form. Okay, Gerald Pollack, he's the guy who sort of figured out how all this works, and he calls it exclusion zone water. And it's also part of our glycocalyx. I'm not going to go into all the details right now, um, but the relevance is infrared light, which is related to heat, that will uh, increase the gel phase of the water in a good positive way, improve cellular function. And the relevance is our old light bulbs, like the incandescent light bulbs and uh, being at a fire and the sunlight, they all give off infrared light, but fluorescent light bulbs and LEDs do not. Um, so they're less, these have a little bit of a positive. Well, the reason why they became popular for us and LEDs is they're more energy efficient, so you save money on electricity. Okay, grounding. Now, grounding's a little bit controversial. There seems to be some positive aspect from it. Yeah, the people who's, who sell all the grounding stuff seem to exaggerate it, but it does seem like there probably is some small positive from it. I'm going to go into more detail on that real soon, but I just want you to be aware of it. What that means is your feet are in contact with the earth. The earth has a negative charge on its surface, negative charge generated by electrons. Some of the electrons go into your body when you're walking barefoot on the earth, or you have your feet on a grounding mat, or you sleep on a grounding mat. And um, it's thought, according to the people who are claiming it's this wonderful thing, that the electrons from the earth go into your body and they help neutralize free radicals because a free radical is typically a molecule that has an unpaired electron in its outer orbital so it wants an electron, it wants to steal an electron and you're thus providing it electrons to neutralize it. If you have more free radicals than antioxidants, you get oxidative stress. So you're helping to prevent oxidative stress which means you're helping to prevent tissue damage and that can help uh, people to heal faster. Again, I'm going to go through the papers in separate lectures, but I wanted you to hear about all this. So what I'm saying is when you're out walking in the sun, you get all these benefits. And I also think that part of this is just how humans are designed. We're designed to walk around all day outside in extended family groups, getting a lot of sunshine, exercising, 
and receiving the benefits of all this stuff. We're sort of like a, you know, part divine, but we're part beast, animal too, and we're sort of designed to fit into this ecosystem. We're not designed to wear these shoes, even though everybody that can wear shoes does wear shoes because you don't want to cut your foot or bump your foot or stub your foot on something. Um, and I like the idea of walking in the sand better than uh, walking in grass because some of the experts on grounding recommend walking in grass. But, you know, in grass, you worry about getting ticks or other bugs on you, bug bites or stepping on something. So anyways, be that as it may, it's a very pleasurable thing, of course, to walk in the sand, uh, especially with someone you love or loved ones. But even by yourself, it's pretty darn pleasant. So these are some of the reasons why. I hope that was interesting. And I'm going to cover more of these topics in future videos.